big day has arrived. I'm gonna take the 1987 and go out on Potoka Lake. We're gonna fish. We're gonna spend the night out there on the water. Never done this before. Pretty excited about it. Hey, you wanna go along? Let's go. Camping underneath the moon, underneath the stars, maybe a little rain. That's the way it goes. Coming right up. watchdog okay you're the watchdog you be good doggy and I'll be back all right Liberty seems to be pulling the Selvin pretty good doing about 62 miles an hour and I don't think I'm gonna go much faster than that it's kind of weird Interstates are kind of strange these days because everybody's going so fast, usually 75, 80 miles an hour. So definitely you need to have your lights on. You need to make sure your lights on your trailer do work. If you're going to drive a little bit slower like this, it's pretty important. that the Selvin is back there. The 2005 Jeep Liberty that I have, I've got a fairly new Jasper transmission, rebuilt transmission in it. So I can tell anytime I hit an incline, you know, it kicks right into gear, it shifts gears. It seems to be working pretty good. Uh, if I didn't have that new transmission in here, if my transmission was older and maybe not in good shape, I don't think I'd be pulling the Selvin with the Jeep. I think I'd probably go back to the pickup truck. But I wanted to try out the 2005 Jeep Liberty just to make sure it is going to pull. It's got the four-wheel drive in it. It's got the new tires on it. So I'm pretty confident it's going to back down into the water and then pull the Selvin back out of the water, especially with the four-wheel drive. I've hit some rain here, but the rain should be over in a couple hours. And it should be a nice evening. Going to get down about 50 degrees tonight. Tomorrow, about a high about 72 with about a six mile an hour north wind so pretty good it's also going to blow a lot of this smoke that's in the air right now it's been hanging in the air the last couple days from the big wildfires up in canada i feel sorry for the canadians up there i hope they're fighting them that's a terrible thing to lose so much ground but man fire is just kind of natural and it does burn everything up some low hanging clouds today. Wrote a little sweet note to Mrs. Melissa as I was leaving and then I put at the end of it, P.S. Gone fishing. Looks like I'm the only one here. Oh, wait a minute, there's somebody. Maybe putting the boat in, might be DNR. All right, made it to the lake, yes. Yeah, you know what? A lot of people don't like going out in the rain. When it rains, they'll stay home, no matter what. And I know rain can be an inconvenience, but you know, one nice thing about the rain, besides everything, is getting a nice drink of water. You usually have the whole place to yourself. So this rain's going to move out within an hour or so. I'll put the Selvin in the water, go on out. Pretty excited. Going to camp out for the night out there. 
and then I'm gonna fish bright and early in the morning. As soon as I open up my eyes in the morning, I'll throw a line out. That'll be cool. I'm just gonna kind of wait. It's kind of raining pretty heavy right now. You can kind of see that. Let, let this rain kind of slack off a little bit, and then we'll go from there. Hey, I'm glad you came along. Did you bring your rain jacket? I hope so. It's gonna get chilly. 50 degrees tonight. successful launch of the Selvin number three Jeep Liberty is gonna stay there tonight hopefully nobody messes with it I've got the trailer all locked up to the vehicle so it'd be pretty hard to for somebody to steal the trailer uh, not exactly sure how I busted a knuckle already but on this launch right here what I did was the two times up to this point here I've always put the Selvin in with a rope and just kind of pushed it out and brought it on around the shore and tied it off. This time I went ahead and fired up the Tuhatsu, the 9.8 Tuhatsu. Was able to get it over here to the boat ramp right there, which is pretty nice. Ahead and tied it up to the boat dock, which is pretty nice. And we're going to get out there. That so, rain has pretty well finished up. Take a look at that lake right there. That is a beautiful absolutely beautiful so really looking forward to this trip glad you came along let's go on an adventure all right out on the water yes very very successful launch I noticed there's a gentleman over here that's having a lot of trouble with his outboard motor his two-stroke outboard motor it makes me just so happy that I went ahead and got this 9.8 Tuhatsu and in case the in case the big Chrysler doesn't want to run right, uh, I've got this nice insurance policy, which I appreciate. Okay, I'm going to get out on the lake, and we're going to go on to the other side there. Hopefully the rain's over with. It looks, uh, looks kind of cloudy, but we'll see how it goes. All right. I'm excited about this adventure. launch there at the fisherman's campground I always come over here to that same spot that I launched the Selvin in the very first time and had all that trouble getting my anchor stuck getting the boat put up on a stump had to work my way off of it I always like to come over here and just throw a line in plus I like to organize my boat you can see how much gear I've got on board that's the cot that's sleeping bags, pillows, uh, my camera equipment, all that kind of stuff. So Boy, I tell you what, I think it's going to be a beautiful day and a beautiful night. And I'm so glad to be out here at Potoka Lake. I've got a few more things than I usually bring. But of course, if I'm going to camp out tonight, I want to make sure I can get a good night's sleep. One of the main things people do when they camp out, like if they're backpacking or something like that, they don't bring a nice pillow with them, a nice sleeping pad with them. They end up being miserable all night, and then that just translates into a bad day the next day coming up. So you always want to try to, if possible, to bring enough stuff to get you a good night's sleep. And of course, when you got days like this, when there's a good possibility, hold on, let me shut this beeper off. I know there's fish underneath me. Don't machine don't need to be telling me that every five seconds. I brought a nice comfortable cut, and what's real important is a nice sleeping pad. Of course, it's going to get down to 50 tonight, so a sleeping pad also works to kind of keep you warm from underneath. And because of the weather the way it is, I had to bring a lot of things to keep everything in case a big rainstorm comes up, keep everything dry. It's a lot so, of hassle, so to speak, when you do trips like this. But the main thing is, is try to just get by each one of those problems one at a time, figure them out. Because if you don't, guess what? You're going to stay at home and you're not going to do anything. So yeah, it takes some effort to get out here outdoors and to do an adventure like this. But the thing is, it's well worth it. Guaranteed. You ever heard the saying, 
don't worry about things because most of the things we worry about never happen anyways. Here's a good example. I saw this weather forecast come in probably two or three days ago with the rain coming in today. And I thought, oh man, because you know, you can fish muddy water, but it is so much better if the water's not muddy. I don't know. I just personally prefer it myself. So I was all worried about the water being muddy and I, I was even looking up videos on how to fish muddy water, what to bring, even brought some extra lures just in case. But look at this water. That is a beautiful green color. Just unbelievable. And that's what you see in the Midwest a lot. You don't see a lot of blue water but you see a lot of this real pretty green water just like this. It's one of those things, hey, I don't have to worry about it, so if I don't catch any fish, it's not because of the muddy water. That is for and sure. by tonight, about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, it is supposed to be 0 to 1 mile an hour. That is absolutely perfect. That's exactly, exactly what I wanted. You know, I've been talking a lot about that dermatology. And going in there and getting yourself checked. Well, even if you check out okay, boy, use the sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Because they're just finding out this sun has always been hot, but it just now has the opportunity to burn right through our atmosphere and is really, really starting to get us bad. So, you know, if you can, if it's not too warm, wear your collared shirt. That keeps the sun off your neck pretty good. I just saw something the other day that said you have to apply about every two hours or so. So I'm using the Sport 30 right here. They were also saying the difference that you can go to 30. Don't worry about going to 50, 75, 100 because 30 will block 97%. 50 costs a lot more money. And you only make it like one more percent. 75, the same thing. More money, but only one more percent. So about 99 percent. So I don't know. That's up to you. If you just absolutely cannot take the sun whatsoever, then you might want to go with a 75. But for most people, that 30 is going to do well. If you're sweating, maybe a little bit more. If you're swimming, maybe you need to apply a little bit now, Here's more. a little safety tip I put for myself, especially when I'm by myself. Yeah, right here, it says put ladder up. Every time I fire the Chrysler up or I fire the Tuhatsi up, I should be able to look at that and that reminds me I've got my ladder down in the water. The reason I did that is because I saw a video not long ago of a guy fishing by himself and he tripped, hit the gunnel, flipped over backwards and went straight down into the water head first. And he was about a 300 pound guy, an older guy at that. You know, the caption was, don't die stupid. But the thing is, is when I watch that, it's like, holy crap. If that happened to me, and I fell off this boat, got tripped up with all my gear and stuff everywhere, and I got tripped up and fell off, you know, I could probably scramble and grab a hold of the Chrysler and try to get on in the back. But once again, if the water is really cold in the fall and the spring, you're going to freeze up so bad, that may be hard to do. So I go ahead and drop my ladder now whenever I put my anchor down and I stop. But I've got my little note right here because I don't want to take off and rip my ladder I don't off. plan on staying at this spot very long. I just, I basically came off the boat ramp and just come around the corner right here and I parked. But I thought I, since I'm here, it, I was able to organize the boat pretty good, get it all in good shape. I think I'll throw a line in a couple times. If I don't catch anything, that'll be all right. Because where we're going to camp is on the other side of the lake by Tillery Hill. That's where we're going to end up. So I'm going to work my way there, but I thought I'd go ahead and throw a line in just... Okay, if you saw my last video I just put out, uh, just oh, about a week ago, I caught those big old catfish, caught a bunch of bluegills. I'll remember what the name of it is. Somebody talked about a certain fish on a video, and I thought that's what the fish were with the big teeth in them that I caught. I'm going to go ahead and use the gulp minnow. This is the 3-inch watermelon pearl well, with the scent on it. I've got me a little jig head on it and a spinner. I did really good last time. This is probably my number one thing to cast besides a rooster tail. I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot now and see what happens. Oh, 
Oh, felt like I might have got a fight just then. Can't believe there weren't any other fishing boats coming out today. I bet they'll come out this afternoon. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's a bite. I just got two bites right there. Two nibbles just then. I'm gonna throw it over again. Okay, the Chrysler has fired up and we're gonna go ahead and head to the other side of the lake. Way to go, Mr. Chrysler. Yeah. Make our way to Tillery Hill. That is Tillery Hill. That's that nice peninsula that the investors tried to, for many years, try to develop, and they just couldn't get a bite on it. Thank goodness for DNR, the state of Indiana, everybody else involved that fought that, and now it remains just as wilderness and wild as can be. That's where we're going to try to camp out, close to Tillery Hill tonight. Every time I take a trip here to Patoka Lake in the south, what I'll do is I'll just fish a different area. So another area I want to go to is one where the rock quarry, they dug out a rock quarry years and years ago and the water's crystal clear. I'm not sure if the Selvin can get back there. I might have to beach the Selvin and walk back there, but it's beautiful. I've been there a couple times before in a canoe and a kayak. It was pretty cool. The first day out here on this trip, I'm going to go ahead and go to Tillery Hill. We're going to fish Tillery Hill. We're going to fish the shoreline all the way around. And then I've got a cove I've got in mind that I've looked at the satellite images that I want to try to camp at. Man, it's turned out to be a gorgeous day. It's been in the mid-90s for a couple weeks now. No rain, and all of a sudden this rain hit, and now it's just beautiful out here. It's supposed to get down to 50 degrees tonight. Looking forward to a good night's sleep. All right, let's get on down here. It's got a pretty nice beach for a Midwest beach for an inland lake. It's a pretty nice little beach right there. But I can see there's just maybe a handful of cars at the most. What's really cool about rainy days is it may be raining and what happens is everybody that's going to come here today has decided, oh, it's raining, we're not going. And so they went on to work, they went on to do something else today. When you get a day like this and the rain has stopped now, there's nobody out here. There, I've seen maybe six boats at the most, all fishing boats out here. Right? Don't let rain cancel your trip because you can get on out here, you can wear rain gear, the rain's going to stop eventually, and then you have the whole place to yourself. There's our destination right there. Hopefully we'll catch some fish and we'll see how it goes. Wow. Man, what a beautiful day. Woo. Got some fish underneath me. Look at the color of that water. I don't know if the Nikon's going to pick out that color of the water, how brilliant that is, but it is beautiful. It's as clear as can be out here. So I'm, I'm just coming up with a strategy, a place I want to anchor tonight. And I'm thinking maybe right up by these rocks right here, on this ledge right here, maybe come out maybe about 40 feet or so, drop an anchor right in this little cove right here. The reason I like that is because I'm pretty sure the sun is going to set. The angle of the sun is probably going to set right out there, so it would probably give me a real pretty sunset. When I first looked at it, this cove right here kind of goes around the bend and goes way on back there. But I'm thinking, okay, that would be pretty cool because, you know, I'd hear a lot of animal sounds and you're almost like camping on the land except you'd be in a boat because the cove goes so far back. I don't know. I'll have to rethink it. Maybe I'll watch the sunset right here, fire it up, go on around the bend, go way back here in that cove. We'll see. Who knows? That's what an adventure is all about, right? Man, did you see all the fish on that fish finder? Man, coming across here, there's fish everywhere out here. 
All right, all right, let's see what I got. Let's see what I got. Come on, baby. Oh, pulling pretty hard. Come on, baby, come on. Holy smacky, looky there. Got another catfish. Wow. Tell you what, that guy right there. Come here, baby. Come here. That's a young catfish right there. These guys get stuck in that bone right there. There we go. Wow. That's a pretty nice looking little catfish right there. That's a young one. Hey, I caught your daddy and your mama last time I was here. All right. Didn't get skunk. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you go. You're a good looking little boy there. Or girl, whatever you are. All right. First fish in the boat. Goodbye. It's always good to get that first fish in the boat. Caught it in some shade. Really not a lot of structure around here. Just kind of a normal bank. Let's see what else I can catch. Well, had one on there. And he got off. Dad gone it. Dad gone. He was a big one too. Mmm. I hate when that happens right there. Yeah, the way I got my system set up, when I catch one, then I've got to come over and turn the camera on real fast, and i got to try to keep pressure on that line at the same time. It doesn't always work, just like that one. That felt like a pretty big fish on there. Once I went back and took the slack up, he was gone. He done spit it out. Oh, well. All right. Yeah. All right. It's like a pretty good one here. Woo! He's pulling. He's pulling. Come on. Oh, look out. Come on. Come on. You ain't gonna break that rod. Come on. Come on. What are you? Ah! I thought so. Woo! Catfish number two. Catfish number two. Hello, buddy. Now, you're the same size as that one. Oh, you're squeaking now. You're squeaking. Uh-huh. All right. Nice little catfish. There we go. Okay, so that's about the same as that other one. Pretty close. See if I can get him in the light here. That's pretty close to that same one I caught. Pretty light colored little catfish. Yeah. Turn this this way a little bit. Get him in the sun there. There you go. Can you see him? Okay. All right, that's pretty. He's, he's pretty. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Man, he cut the crap out of my hand just then. Dang, I never been cut my fish before. Ugh. Wow. <sighs> Woo. Golly, he gouged the crap out of me. All right, let's put him back in. Come here, come here. I don't care, you got me, you got me. Fair play. I got you, you got me, okay? All right, we'll call that fair. You cut me pretty good. You taught me a lesson. All right, there we go. See you later, bud. Oh, man. He gouged me good. Boy, things not going to quit bleeding, I tell you that. Okay, if you follow my channel, you know I like to ask a lot of questions. And if you have the answer, leave it in the comments. But that catfish just then, the way he lunged like that and, and stuck my finger, did he do that on purpose? Was it like, is that like a technique that they use and when he lunged, he took, took that front fin and he jabbed me with it? The same as, you know, I might jab somebody with a, with a punch. Is that what he did or was that just a pure accident? He happened to flip, my finger was in the wrong place and he got me leave that in the comments hey you ever been stuck by catfish like that before people get bit by them here's another question i got for you i've been cut before like with a knife and stuff you know it hurts when it happens it doesn't continue to get bad this one here is stinging like it has poison in it does he have something on the end of those little fins that cause it to, to sting like that 
I don't know. Another thing I don't know. Tell you what. I just learned me a big lesson though. That first aid kit I got, it's got the bare minimal in it. Next time I come out here, you better believe I'm going to invest in a good first aid kit. Because there ain't no telling what could happen. You know, you could get cut with a knife and be seriously bleeding or something out here. And like I said, there's nobody out here. I haven't seen a boat go by for an hour. It's just one of them days. I mean, it's a good it's a good day. It's just one of those days. Yeah, it's funny. I'm sitting there taping up my finger and uh, almost crashed into shore. The wind picks up. I didn't, wasn't even paying attention. Wind picked up and almost threw me right into the shore. So yeah, that baby's stinging right there. I'll show you how bad it bled really fast. I mean, that was like, man, when he hit, Within seconds, I had blood like all over the place. That's weird. All over my gear bag. I got blood all over it. I got blood on my life jacket. But man, it just went everywhere. Went everywhere. It had blood on one of the seats. This seat right here. I done wiped it off a little bit, but it had blood on it. I get pulled over by the police, and they're going to think, man, who did you kill out here? I'm going to say, officer, believe it or not, it was a catfish. Maybe see if we can catch more of those. Just got to be more careful when I handle them. I don't know. Maybe maybe gloves would be a good idea. Some kind of a some kind of a leather glove. Let uh, let me know in the comments when you catch catfish like that. Do you wear gloves when you handle them or not? Interesting. All right, get bucked off the horse. Got to get back on. I think I got a good one here. This one hit like a bass this time. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. Come on up here. Come on, let's see. Come on. Come on, Bubba. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No. Nah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think it's a catfish. I think it's another catfish. Come on. Come on. Oh boy, I think it is another catfish. Holy smoke. This is like crazy man this is crazy oh Crap. lost him man he was a he was a big catfish i got to be i got to be honest with you after getting stabbed with that smaller one that dude right there i don't know what i was going to do with him i could imagine man he would he would just slice the crap out of your fingers. Well, another giant catfish. Didn't get him in the boat, though. When it comes to fish like this, you see these catfish that I'm catching. This last, the last video I put out, you know, I caught some pretty major catfish. And that one right there, I think, would have been a record breaker for me. I mean, that was a big, big catfish right there. You know, obviously, you know, I said last time I was going to get a net. I should have had a net. If I'd had a net, he was right there at the surface of the water. I could have scooped him in and here. I'm kind of waiting on the net because there's a chance Mrs. Melissa may, for Father's Day, get me a net. So I didn't want to go out and buy a net and then disappoint her by her getting a net and I already have one. You know, I'm using this line, and I, like I said, I think it's 10 or 12 pound line. Okay, and I'm fishing Patoka, and I'm going to do a lot of fishing at Patoka this year. I, I just got a feeling this is going to be my mainstay place to fish. So my question to you is, what would you do? Would you put 20 pound line on there? That catfish just snapped it just like crazy right there. You know, I've, I've always heard 10 or 12 is about the way you want to go, but I guess... You know, if, I, if I'm if i catching a lot of these big fish like this, maybe I should go up. I don't know. So let me know. I need A lot of you guys and gals are going to say, Mr. Lawrence, 
Quit messing around with that monkey mouse reel you got and get you something good. A bait caster, you know, that has got some nice line on it and stuff. But, yeah, this is good line that I'm using. Uh, the rod that I'm using is good. It's just, yeah, the, the reels are kind of questionable. But, you know what? I'm not out here. It's not a fishing tournament. I'm not out here winning money. It just doesn't bother me that much to use what I've got. It, it's a little bit of a struggle to land them. But, you know what? Maybe, maybe that's kind of a skill set. It's maybe. easy to land it with a real nice reel that you just crank it and it, it just pulls that big old fish right up to the boat when you use a reel like i'm using you know you got to have a little patience and you got to let it fight you got to let it swim and and you got to kind of tire it out a little bit almost like when they sport fish out on the ocean yeah i know that's a stretch to think about that. if i keep catching these big catfish like this I, I guess it is time to to go with some line some stronger line and a net that's important. so you know when i was coming into this bay right here the fish finder was on. You even heard it. Yeah, I know you haven't heard it beeping over here because I shut it off. Because I don't understand that thing just beeping the whole time. Maybe I can put it on silence or oh. something. The catfish I caught before this was on the shore. Maybe about 10 feet off the shore. Both of those I caught, the first two I caught. But now that one right there, I threw it out here in the middle of this little cove right here. We bring it in real slow and he hit it out in the middle. So I think they're probably all over here. If I had to, I guess that last video I had, I showed everybody what I was rigging up in, in more detail. I have it on this video, so let me show you. This is what I'm rigging up to catch these big catfish. And this right here, I've caught fish almost uh, on rivers, lakes, you name it. They seem to hit on this right here. This is a gulp minnow. This is a watermelon pearl. Wait a minute, let me see here. Yeah, water watermelon pearl, three inch. And they hit this thing like crazy. It's got this little tail on it. It's got a lot of scent to it. And then I use a just a jig head, just a regular jig head on it. And then I take a little spinner like this right here and attach it. So that's how I'm, I'm catching these fish with this right here. But check that out, because I caught some big fish on it, catching them again, once again, on this guy right here. I happened to go to Dick's Sporting Goods, and I bought me a brand new pack. I just now used the pack up that I bought last time. So it took one, one and a half fishing trips to use that. And if you look, there's that juice. See that juice right there? I think that's the secret formula right there. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods did have black shad, and they had, uh, oh, an, another color. But you know that watermelon pearl. Man, I can't. That, that's that fish. That, I basically have my little Nikon camera I'm filming with right now, and I've got this Nikon right here that I can use. You know, I can see that if I really wanted to put out a fishing show, I'd have to get that other contraption. In fact, I think I do have a harness. I just never have used it before. When I catch these fish, I've got to somehow release the tension in order to turn the camera on in order to come back to the tension again, and I've lost several of them that way already today. I'm going to just throw it out there. That's about where that one was right there. So I throw it out there and I just let it sink a little bit. Let it sink in the water and then at that point right there I just pull it in nice and slow. Nice and slow. I'll ask my son-in-law Jared. He's a big catfish guy. He goes out on the Wabash and catches some giant catfish. So I'm going to ask him, does he have a, a gloves that he wears and stuff like that? Because that's got me a little spooked now. You know, I don't know if you could tell, but I wasn't that disappointed I didn't land that great big fish. You know, you get you get bit or get stuck by something like that, you, you learn a lesson. You know, I do have a nice bait caster at home. I bought it, and, uh, you know, uh-oh. Oh, got a good hit again. He got off. I tried, you know, a dozen times. I had to the familiar problem that you have with them that if you don't know what you're doing is they'll bird nest on you uh, quite a bit quite a bit they'll bird nest on you so I don't know I got tired of messing with it and put it up but that was my fault because you know I should have used it and I should have got used to it. notice this old Shakespeare just a squalls wait a minute this ain't a Shakespeare this is a Pfluger oh 
I thought I had a Shakespeare. This is a Fluger. I'm actually going to be interested to look at that video and see exactly how that catfish got my finger. I'm thinking it was that front fin that got me. But Maybe I can put it on slow motion and see exactly, exactly what happened there because, man, he, that guy nailed me. I am planning on camping out here on the water tonight. That'll be really cool. I'll do, I'll do some night fishing. I'll show you my whole setup. I've been working on it pretty hard. I've got mosquito netting that goes over the canopy. I've got a tarp I can put up that I can crawl underneath it, but I don't think tonight I'm going to really need that tonight. So I may just not put the tarp up, may just use the mosquito net. I'm really looking forward to the birds. Morning waking me up and I'll be able to throw a line in right away. I'll have to pick out what bay. Maybe I ought to camp at this bay right here. And I appreciate you coming by. Got dinner here, gonna serve dinner up here. The sun, uh, I, I think we're about three hours from, from uh, sunset, if I had to All get. right, there we go. Hello, buddy. Oh, look there. Got a little crappie. Hello, crappie. I was wondering where you crappies were. Hello, how you doing? Little crappie man. Oh, yeah, it's a little crappie. All right. See you later. If I had to guess, I'd say that coon's probably looking for snakes, frogs, maybe fish. Maybe he might grab a fish if it's close enough. Yeah, he's snaking all along that shoreline right there, looking through that thick grass like that. No way I'd walk through there. Wow. Get snake bit. All this property back here. All this property you see. This is part of that Tillery Hill. This is part of the place where developers wanted to have it. Where they would sell lots off. And there would be houses all over here. And condominiums and hotels and all that kind of stuff. You know, They would have made a lot of money, I'm sure. People would have made a lot of money. People would have come and enjoyed Patoka Lake. But boy, it would have changed the whole atmosphere so fast. We're here. I've got this this uh, wilderness just as quiet back here. All right, I think it's time to go on over the other side of this outlet here and find a good place to camp. You know, it's about that time. I always like setting camp up, get everything done before it gets dark. It's always better to do that. So I'll come back here probably tomorrow, maybe catch some more catfish, maybe some more crappie. We'll see. sit perfectly right here take a few photographs and then move over there later once they leave I tuck myself right back into this cold drop my front anchor so my boat turns around and faces the Sun yeah that's one of the nice things about YouTube see like right now I learned this on YouTube and there's a guy I watch, Bob the Boat Guy, I think. I think that's what his channel is. He taught me this, that when you drop an anchor, whichever way you want to face, whichever way the wind's blowing, whichever way you want the boat to face, that then you drop that anchor. So I've got one on the front, I got one on the back. So I just dropped the front one, and now what's gonna happen is the boat is gonna eventually swing around and basically face the sunset right here. See, I'm not doing anything right now. It's coming on around, coming on around. It's pretty cool to see that happen. Here's the first jet ski that I've seen out here since I've been coming. Well, this is only my third time now since I got the Selvin. You know, I've come out to Patoka Lake forever, but this is the first jet ski. Oh, there's two of them out there that I've seen. You know, I was a big windsurfer. Me and Ron and my brother and a bunch of other people were we're big time windsurfers out here and stuff, and we always called these guys sea fleas. 
because man when they got popular they were just like everywhere i mean see just everywhere back and forth back and forth back and forth they seem to have died down in popularity okay. well this is this is good uh, this see the boat has set around got my sunset right in front of me here let me show you turn the camera around here there's your sunset right there Like this is this is phase two now of the trip phase one was going out putting a boat in the water doing some fishing catching some fish that was pretty cool this is phase two this is the camping trip